Right, so that interview between Julia Hartley Brewer and Palestinian MP Dr Mustafa Barghouti that I covered in a video yesterday has gone viral for all the right reasons, condemning it as one of the worst examples of gutted journalism going, of bias and of racism. The Palestinian politician could not get a word in edgeways as the talk TV host made it all about herself and showed nothing but disdain for her guest. It was an extreme example of what so many in the media have been doing though. Every interview seemingly beginning with those words, do you condemn Hamas? When the atrocity being meted out by Israel in Gaza is so overwhelmingly disproportionate, it is insulting. Western mainstream media have been horrendous in their pro-Israel leanings, but so awful was this particular interview, so blatant and so foul in how it was conducted, what was asked and the attitude to the responses given, but the Palestinian response to it, following on, of course, from everything we've said on the matter in the West, as disgusted as we all have been, well, I reckon it might come as something of a surprise to you. Right, so that Julia Hartley Brewer interview has been heard around the world now. The interview that shook the world, shocked and appalling pretty much everybody who has watched it. As they say, a lie has got itself around the world before the truth has got its boots on, so to speak. It was so bad, news articles have literally been written about the interview, such as in Middle East Eye, which has covered demands for an Ofcom probe into it. For the record, Ofcom has stated that any programme which prompts more than 50 complaints to it gets included in their weekly complaints bulletin, which gets published every Wednesday. And that includes the actual number of complaints made. So if you haven't done so, and you plan on having your say about Julia Hartley Brewer's conduct on Talk TV, then get on with making that complaint and make Ofcom blush with how big a number that might just be. Even mainstream media have covered this, from the Mirror to the Metro to the Huffington Post. They've all written articles on the conduct of Julia Hartley Brewer in this interview with a Palestinian MP. Naturally, plenty of people on social media have also weighed in with their opinions too. You can guess what a lot of them are saying. Literally millions of people, millions, have watched clips of Hartley Brewer screaming at Palestinian MP Dr Mustafa Barghouti. There are so many comments you do not have to look very far to find them, but this video isn't going to be about those comments. It's about the response from Palestinians themselves, from Palestine itself, to that interview. And who better, frankly, who is better placed to comment on it than Dr. Barghouti himself. He was on the receiving end of it, after all. Asked by a reporter in Ramallah in the West Bank yesterday for his response to that interview, yes, even in the West Bank, Haiti Spear's conduct has made the news right now, even with everything else they are currently dealing with. Dr. Barghouti went ahead and said, This interview has essentially revealed the bias persisting since the beginning of the aggression on Gaza and perhaps for years, the strong Western media bias towards the Israel narrative. This interview exploded because we succeeded in presenting the strength of the Palestinian narrative and the painful truth that cannot be ignored or erased. This stems from the power of the Palestinian causes justice, which alarmed her remarkably. However, she revealed three things. An inability to hear the truth, as witnessed in a previous BBC interview where they cut the broadcast completely to avoid hearing the facts about the massacres committed by Israel. Secondly, she displayed a racist element, resorting to discussions about women and exhibiting deep ignorance in this area, because anyone that knows me well knows that I am one of the biggest advocates of women's rights in general. This is a serious racist act comment, assuming that all Arabs, Muslims and Palestinians do not respect women. It is a dangerously racist statement. Thirdly, she demonstrated absolute unprofessionalism. No one in the world can conduct an interview in this manner. I interpret her explosion as a result of provocation due to her failure to cover the Palestinian narrative and the justice of the Palestinian cause. A fantastic reaction expanded globally. In my opinion, this interview has won us more international public opinion than hundreds of other interviews, because it is clearly exposing the bias of this type of Western media towards Israel blatantly and excessively. Extreme racism towards Palestinians became evident. This means she's now in a problem of her own making. So she isolated herself. And now there is an international campaign, as understood, demanding her dismissal with complaints to the British Journalist Union about her unprofessional and unacceptable behaviour. So in Dr. Barghouti's opinion, then, if I've read this correctly, Hartley Brewer's done them a favour. About the only thing he drew up short of was saying thank you to her. And who can blame him for not going quite that far when, as he put it, she was extremely racist. 
I think he's probably right. I think she probably has done Palestine a favour. Hartley Brewer stood there and encapsulated in one foul, screaming interview what I think a lot of the rest of the world think of Western media. I think she proved their point. And to anyone who was perhaps more ambivalent towards that, eyes might well have been opened and widened. I sincerely hope that's the case anyway. Most of all, of course, it is not so much around the world that attitudes towards our media need opening, but here in the UK. More and more people are advocating for not just alternative media sources and smaller independent media outlets for whom reputation becomes the difference between success and failure, unlike the big papers with their billionaire backers, a bad story there, a legal issue there, well, they can just weather that and take it on the nose. But the smaller ones, well, it can be the difference between that and collapse completely from people abandoning them. Reputation is everything. But foreign mainstream news as well is so good, so often covering British news in a much better, more honest manner. Our mainstream media, as I said, are billionaire owned. The people on them are paid stupid amounts of money. And if it wasn't all about the money at the end of the day, you wouldn't be seeing, for example, Tory MPs lining up for a gig on GB News, would you, and the like. Talk TV, we come back to Hartley Brewer's outlet, is Murdoch owned. It has virtually the entire leadership of Reform UK working for it, as well as Hartley Brewer. So beware of what you listen to and clearly who you vote for in that case. These pop-up Fox News rip-off stations that have come in the last few years are proving to be a really toxic addition to a media world already regarded as piss poor by any measure of journalism. It's made all the worse when the likes of Hartley Brewer gets platformed as broadcasters elsewhere on other stations because then their views become more mainstreamed and become more believable. And what passes for news and discussion and news, both here and abroad, just gets polluted. I think Dr. Barguti's response to Hartley Brewer, both on camera and afterwards in that interview with that reporter in the West Bank, were patient, were calm and were matter of fact. I think he's right that that interview can only have benefited the Palestinian cause as a result of things. And for that, all we pro-Palestinians, everybody right now who is standing with Palestine and wants a free Palestine, an independent state of Palestine, standing in solidarity with Gaza as Israel continues its genocide, can all say a big thank you to Julia Hartley Brewer for the favour she has done those people. And may we all wish she's off our screens permanently in the none too distant future because she has nothing to journalistic discourse in our country, adds absolutely no value at all. And if you haven't seen the interview and want the details on it and how truly terrible it was, delivered by yours truly on one of my videos here. You need to watch this video, of course, because it's here. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.